fixing to turn it on. <laughs> Wait, wait, turn it on when we start. I'll be walking around here. Uh, we said what baptism means in the literal Greek. That old book is about tore apart. I'm going to have to get another one, which is all right. Bless us as we worship you today. 
We thank you for everyone that is here. Uh, we know that you will bring us through because you told us that you will. And we just ask you to bless us as we worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We know that God is great. But you got to believe it in your heart that he is great to you. I know he's great to me, but you got to know that for you. Oh, Lord, my God, when I...
Our scripture reading today will be Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 6, if you decide to follow along. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, yes. the conviction of things not seen. Mm -hmm. For by it the man of old gained uh, appeal by faith. We understand that the worlds were prepared by the Word of God and that it was seen and that what was a seen is not made out of things which were visible. Yes. By faith, Abraham offered to God a better sacrifice came to faith obtained the testimony that was righteous and God testifying about his gifts and through faith though he is dead he still speaks yes. by faith Enoch was taken up so that he would not die and he was found because God took him up for he obtained the witness of that before he is being taken up that he was pleasing to God and without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Shall we go to Heavenly Father and pray? Our Father and our God, we appreciate your blessings. We thank you for the privilege that we have of an assurance in your word that we through faith, as we respond in obedience to that faith, have the great promise of being with you in the afterlife. Yes. Bless the congregation. We know that we have a great illness that's going around in not only this country, in this area, but the whole world. We ask you to bless us that we might still continue to be faithful to you, that we encourage you to help us in our daily lives, that we might always look to you in faith that it will be over and that you're in control with these things that happen and that we might gain an understanding of our dependence upon you yes. as a result of this. Yes. That this thing also might work for good to those who are faithful to you. Oh, Guide us that we continue to realize as a people that our life is just like a vapor. Yes. It appears for a little while. And you have the knowledge and the power yes. of ending that life wherever, whenever our point in time is. Yes. Guide us in that, Father. We'll praise you for it yes. and thank you for your blessings of life and bless us as we worship you that we might truly, in faith, worship you in spirit and glorify your name because of great salvation that we have in Christ Jesus and the love that is shown in him willingly go to the cross for our salvation and for your love for us. Through Jesus the Christ we pray as we go into this period of worship and devotion. Amen. Amen. I'm going to repeat the course before Brother Joe come up. If for the prize we have for
in New Orleans, the truth and prayer this morning. It's a joy just to be here, isn't it? Yes. I said, one thing I want you to do, I know y'all still in love, Tammy, but y'all got to get six feet apart. <laughs> <laughs> six feet apart, there you go. Sister Nell, y'all get six feet apart. Now, right? so I know you, you can do without it for 30 minutes, right? <laughs> so he can, okay. So if they come in our building this morning, at least be legal that much, right? We that much to begin. I just believe that God will still take care of us. He will. He's always taking care of his people, hasn't he? One way or the other, he's already taken care of there. It's not in my sermon today, but when you go home today, read Daniel chapter 3. I think it'll make you want to stand up for the Lord. The Lord needs people to stand up for him today. We have the world that's standing up while the Christian, guess what they're doing? Sitting down. The world is speaking out while the Christian is doing what? Keeping their mouth closed. Yeah. So we want to say this morning, we're glad to see you. I'm not going to hold you long, but we just want to let you know God can depend on you. Amen. He got a few people can depend on you. Yeah. During the days of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, out of the whole town, there was only three boys that stood up. Yes. During the days of Noah, Noah, out of all the people in the world, only eight people. Gideon had 10,000. When it all boiled down, he only had 300. Christ had 12. When it boiled down, he had 10. And I can imagine we got more than Christ had this morning. We're doing good, Jamie. And one brother said last week, we got more people here that had the football game because nobody said the football game. And it's a joy just to come to God's house to worship one more time. For the next two minutes, if you have your Bibles, we're going to be studying from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. As the King James Version said, but faith is the substance of things hoped for and is the evidence of things not seen. I'm here this morning not because of some things that people have said. I'm here because Christ died. He rose again on the third day, and the results of that, we have the church of Jesus Christ. Yes. We have people that are wearing the name of Christ, and that's the reason why I'm here this morning. Because the same Jesus that was hanging on the cross, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw what? All men. All men unto me. And I just pray that what we're doing this morning, maybe what Mark is doing at this hour, what I'm doing at this hour, we'll be able to reach many people for the Lord. Yes. We don't have to criticize each other for what we're doing. We ought to all try to work together for what God, for the good of the kingdom of God. My lesson is, we have come this far by faith. Amen. We have come this far by what? Faith. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word. Because he never, I don't know about you, God has never failed me yet. As a young boy growing up, my dad died leaving five children. And I can imagine what it's like. Can y'all visualize that? Never worked outside of the home. Now you have five children and no husband. And I want to say, church, I didn't know where my next meal was coming from. I didn't even know how house payment, how we was going to pay our rent. But I still have something to eat today. I'm 73 years old. I'm still eating. So somebody say amen. amen. I'm 73 years old. I still have some clothes. What about? On my back. On my back. I still have friends. I want to say to you, I don't know how it happened, but those in the neighborhood helped us till we could get on our own feet. Amen. David said in Psalms 37, 25, I have been young. Can somebody say amen? amen. I, I have been young, but now I'm old. When you get old, you learn how to appreciate life a little bit better. Yeah. There's something about a good night's sleep means a whole lot to you when you get old, but when you're young, you don't worry about those things. A lot of things we take for granted when we're young. Yeah. But when we get old, life looks a little different for us. It means, but now I'm old. Listen to what they say. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Forsaken means to forget about you. 
forsaken to omit you, to forsake you, to overlook you. I have never seen the righteous. I'm talking about people that in the morning time they're praising God. In the evening they're praising God. Whatever they do, they're doing it according to God's will. That's what he talked about, righteous. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Cold spring this morning, I want to say to you, I never seen a church member that was homeless. I want you to pull my coattail before we leave because I can't shake your hand today because my wife told me not to. <laughs> She's going to feel a little under the weather, but sometimes psychologically when we go through those stages. But I want to say to you, now you know, <laughs> But I want to say to you, I have never seen a church member that been faithful, didn't have a place to stay. If you have, after the service is over, come tell me. i never seen a church member that was dedicated to God's kingdom, didn't have food to eat. That's the reason why David says, this is, it's only, I have never seen the righteous, what? Forsaken, nor any of his children have to be for bread. Some of you sitting in this audience right now, I talked to some of the older members last week. I'm not going to say older members, the golden age, they like that better. And they said, you know, when we was growing up, you know, we had to raise all of our food. And my mama knew how to can it. And you young folks don't know nothing about canning. She had to can our food and some of the food was dry. And guess what happened? A lot of our flour came in a sack. Eric, you don't know nothing about a sack. This flower came in a sack, and they took the sack and made a dress out of it. And they said, but the thing about it, we rode the church in a wagon. And the reason why we didn't have night service because there was no lights on the wagon. But I want to say to you, we have come this far by faith. God has blessed us with a car with a roof on it. Yeah. And somebody was smart enough to put a windshield wipers on it so when it rained, we could still dry. Yeah. When it got cold, they put a heater, where about? Inside the car. And when it got too hot, they did what? Air conditioning. And I want to say to you, in our cars that have power stern, power windows, power brakes, and we still don't come to church at night. Yeah. <laughs> we have come this far, how? By faith. And I want to say to you this morning, church, I'm here because I believe that Jesus told me from the book of Revelation, he said, be faithful unto death. And some of us act like we're dead, but we're still alive. Isn't that right? We ought to show the Spirit of God in us by the life that we do live. We find here in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, and verse 6. The Lord said, you have forsaken me, says the Lord. Uh -huh. I will stretch out my hands against you and destroy you. Uh -huh. I want you to see when we forsaken God, God will do what? Sure. He'll forsaken us. Yes, and I believe Hebrews chapter 10 and the verses 25, forsaken not to assemble ourselves together as the matter of some years, as we see that they approach you. Some of you may say, what does this apply to? Whenever we come to worshiping God, we ought to be willing to come together because why are we going to do so little for him when he has done so much for us? We have come this far by what? Faith. Faith. And I want to say some of the elders obtained a good report because they had faith in God. The reason why I'm here because I believe God requires us to be here. And I want to say I'm keeping note of all of us as a ten, even during these trying times. And when it's all over, I can believe, just like when the children of Israel crossed over the Red Sea, Miriam won a song. I believe, Jamie, one of these days, we're going to be able to sing a new song. Yeah. The song won't be when we all get to heaven. The song going to be, we're all in heaven now. We ought to all be rejoicing with because we have been able to be faithful until death. And I want to say to you, then the crown of life will be given unto you. We come this far by faith. How many of you attended school on faith? How many of you bought a car on faith? How many of you bought a house? Now, I want to say that first.
first car that I bought, my wife, my, my, my mama told me, say, son, I don't see how you're going to pay for it. I said, well, they come get it. Well, you got to sell it to somebody else. And just sell it. Don't worry about Don't worry about things in this life. When you do it by faith, it'd be 1978, and I still have that same vehicle. And I want to say to church members, if you be faithful with God first in this life, he tells you, you heard me say so many times from this book, that not. What's going to happen? But it's those that are faithful, those that are dedicated to his cause, those that love him, those that keep his commandment, when they knock, doors are going to be open. And I want to say, Coach Ring, God going to open doors for us here. We're just going through a little rough time now. But in order to make it to the hills, you got to go through the mountain. Because if there was no valleys, there would be no mountain. And when it, one day when we get to the mountaintop, we can be like the men who said, oh, well, hallelujah, we've made it over. Thanks goodness to God, we've made it. We've come this far by what? Uh, none of us have seen heaven. None of us have seen the face of God. But every time I open the word where my faith comes from, it tells me from the beginning of the Bible, in the beginning it was God, wasn't it? Yeah. And the Bible tells me he was the one that created the heavens and the earth. And the same God that was serving this morning, he had enough power in his voice and to speak and to frame everything in this world. And that's the reason why our church, I still believe in God. Yeah. Every time I hear a newborn baby cry, it strengthens my faith. To see a creature nine months ago about the size of the head of a match. Nine months later, this same creature got eyes and ears and, and mouth and color of his hair and feet and, and legs. I'm able to, within less than nine months, he's able to walk. When he gets to the 16, start talking back. Yeah. <laughs> but whenever you see this, man did not make that. But it took a what? God. When I see the great oak tree, they raise their head to the sky and bow in submission to God. Man did not make that great oak tree, but it was in the power of God. Yeah. And I want to say to you this morning, when we learn how to trust God, to obey God, we're going to find our life going to be more fruitful than it has ever been before because we learn how to trust and what? Obey. Trust and obey. That's the reason why Joshua, Joshua 24, 15, he was able to make it to the promised land. When he looked around himself, when everybody else had turned to the golden calf, guess what he said? For me and my house, and my house we, we will do what? Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. And I want to say to every Christian this morning, don't become dismayed. Don't become discouraged. Don't become like the days about serving God. Don't let no one discourage you about what you're doing because somebody have already called you and told you, are you going to church Sunday? I said, the Lord wake me up. If the Lord start me on my way, if the Lord give me strength, I will be there. And I just believe you're going to hear me say it over and over and over again. He took care of Shadrach. He didn't put the fire out. We didn't protect them. We're about in the fire. So church, we're in the fire now. Amen. He's not going to put the fire out. But he's going to protect us while we were about in the fire. He didn't keep Daniel out of the lion's den, but he protected him where about from the lion. Yes. And I want to say this, this condition that we have now, that is spread like throughout the whole world, God people will be protected. Yes. You know, the true Israelite, when the plagues hit Egypt, you know the water that the Israelites had didn't have no blood in it. Are y'all with me? You know when the when they were struck, ready to cross the Red Sea, the enemy had darkness, but God people had light. You that are here this morning, you're walking in the light, aren't you? And if you walk in the light, as He is the light, we have fellowship. How, Jamie? One with another in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son, continue to cleanse us from all of our sins. Okay. And I believe the same God that took care of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Paul and Silas in prison, and Peter also, he's going to take care of us. Yeah. Because we're leaning, we're dependent 
up from here. If you're here this morning, you need to pray as the church. I wouldn't wait any longer. I would just continue ask for prayers. We need prayers for our nation, don't we? Yeah. We need prayers for our own family because many of our friends and family seems to be able to be discouraged to fall by the wayside. We need to pray for them because the devil wants to destroy our homes. I know that's right. He wants to destroy our house. He wants to destroy our, our family. Yes. He wants to destroy our jobs. He wants us to be fighting one with another. He wants brothers in, in Christ to fight one another because, you know, if we are divided, house is divided against itself, it was. It cannot stand. But we're going to say for me and my house, not me, but we are going to what? Serve the Lord. So if you're here this morning, you need prayer. And now on this day, the fifth day of April, 2020, the Lord deferred prayers of the righteous. God still here. Amen. And they revealed much this day and time. So if anyone called you say, if you go to church next Sunday, Say, if it's the Lord's work, then we will be here. And not only that, but by your faith, you've got to encourage someone else to be faithful like you. Yeah, yeah. I just believe that God is smiling on us, not tomorrow, but when? Yeah. He's smiling on you right now because you had the courage to get up to come. Amen. You had the love for him to even though, like they say, even though I get destroyed, i got a better house than this in any house. Yes. So we're going to ask you to come to the Lord, not tomorrow, but when? Right now. I am <laughs> Father, we ask 
you for strength at this immediate congregation. Allow us not to look back or to mm -hmm. criticize one another, but let's look forward on what we're doing to give you the glory and the honor. Yes. yes. Help our minds to be receptive of the gospel, mm -hmm. and even though in our own home, let us pray for one another. Yes. Let us build one another up. <laughs> Let us work while it is day because each day of our life, night is going to come in our life. And regardless of who we are, whatever night comes, that's going to be the destination of our soul. Father, pray for our home. Strengthen us as husband and wife, as children. Strengthen us as leaders in our homes and the church as well. Let us have a mind to do what you command us to. And God, we pray for this nation of ours. Those that make a decision for, for the country and for the betterment of us and the whole world, guide their thoughts as well. Keep them safe and guide us. And Lord, let's, let us continue to work on our soul salvation with fear and trembling. It's in your name we offer this prayer. Amen. Amen. Amen.
us his body. May we do so our way that we'll be pleasing in his sight. Yes. In his holy name we do pray. Amen. 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 Gracious Heavenly Father, as we now take of this cup which represents our dust and blood, your Son and our Savior Jesus Christ, may we take our minds back to where he told his disciples to do this in remembrance of me. Yes. In his holy name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Our most precious Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you have given us. Among those being a talent that we can work, make a living, and support our families. And now, Father, we have an opportunity to give back unto you a portion of those earnings. Knowing you have a cheerful gift. In his name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
we are glad to see each one that's here. We, in spite of the goings on around us and illness and so forth, we certainly encourage that we try to meet if we can. We understand the anxiety that many people have because of perhaps their age and so forth. But we certainly appreciate it. We'll be here again <clears throat> this coming Sunday, the Lord will. Yes. And like we are today, uh, Joanne uh, did manage today to get the 930 classes up. Uh, we'd be glad I was I heard I were here. And so if you want to come at that point in time and see the uh, uh, bark on Leaching on class, he did a good, good job on uh, Hebrews uh, today, the sixth <laughs> chapter, and I guess he will go on into that book at that point in time. And on Wednesday night, he has, of course, a, a class also in, in, on the uh, smartphones. Mm -hmm. uh, so we incur and at 7 o'clock. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it's strange. I, I'm going to take a little of your time, Joe. You can uh, uh, short uh, time. Uh, 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 it's uh, strange uh, how, many thir how much 13 years maybe. No electricity. Yes. Yeah. No heaters in the car. <laughs> no windshield lockers on the Model T. A crank to start it with. Yes. Shall I go on? <laughs> uh, Thirteen years. Thirteen years. <laughs> now that's in East Texas. Probably they have uh, some of those things in the Dallas area, but we were country fellows, yeah. folks, on the farm, sharecropping. And I know that uh, we have several here. I think Darlin had part of that too, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. And Joe, I don't know whether he did or not. Uh, how did it fit in that car? Well, it had a rumble seat.